coming up on BYU Basketball with Mark Pope. The Cougars hit the WCC tournament off a springboard win over San Francisco. Now, as the calendar turns to March, it's time for the madness of the postseason. And we're gearing up with the coach and seniors Gideon George and Rudy Williams next on BYU TV. This is BYU Basketball with Mark Pope, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. And now, your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. We welcome you back inside Studio C in the BYU Broadcasting Building here in Provo, Utah. We are live and on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. And our social media hashtag for one final time this year is hashtag Pope Show. Coming up on tonight's broadcast, we will look back at a scintillating senior night as BYU dispatched the Dons at the Marriott Center. Assistant coach Cahill Fennell will help us look back at that one inside the film room. Deep Blue will also spend some time with Coach Fennell as we learn more about his story and how he got to BYU. Senior standouts Rudy Williams and Gideon George will join us live in studio. We'll look ahead to what's ahead for the Cougs at the WCC tournament, and we'll have social media Q&A plus a final BYU Hoops trivia question of this season. Let's get our season finale show underway by welcoming in one final time the head coach of the Cougars, Mark Pope. So we're not going to be here for a while, so yeah. they better get all the noise out they possibly yes. can tonight. Yes, yeah. yes, that's right. That's right. Thank you guys for coming. Super fun. <laughs> and so good to be coming in off the way you guys played on the weekend, too, yeah. which makes it even more special. Yeah, 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 it does. So what is on Mark's mind tonight? Um, uh, I got so much. First of all, thank you guys for being here. It makes it super fun. So thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You know, it, this has not been our most successful win-loss season so far. We still think we have some magic left in the tank, but for 16,000 people to show up on Saturday to celebrate these seniors was incredible. Like, I'm telling you, Cougar Nation, and this actually bears out with the numbers. There's, there's no fan base like it in the country, so we're super, super grateful. So thank you, guys. That is just amazing. And then the other thing on my mind is you can see uh, my two daughters just sneaking into the studio late, <laughs> and that's because, that's because right before she got here Shay realized that she was wearing a red sweatshirt <laughs> and so she had to go find something <laughs> blue to put over the top of it nice so, cover-up job so Thank we also done. do yeah. one of the great things about this show is we do all true confessions we don't hold anything back right right so that's super exciting and then um, can I just get uh, a thought today um, how are we enjoying this snow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's super interesting because I had I had an initial reaction of yes, and then I had this flurry of kind of like, ah. Nice pun, by the way, Coach Pope. Yes. Yeah, here you go. Little flurry. See, it's a <laughs> professional. Where were you guys on that one? I yeah. got no reaction. Uh, there we go. Thank you. Yeah. This is a good crowd. Even if it's courtesy, it counts. We yeah. should just throw out the whole script of the show and just enjoy each other's company tonight. <laughs> But a uh, little um, spiritual thought tonight. We, we always like to do this at the beginning of the show. So um, the snow is like, um, it just keeps coming and coming. And it seems like it gets colder and colder. And um, I think we look outside sometimes and be like, whew, enough, right? But it is, uh, we need it desperately. And because we have it, we're gonna have this incredible, incredible, amazing green spring and summer. And I assume that we're going to have a refilling uh, Great Salt Lake and maybe even a refilling, you know, the lakes all around uh, the state, which we enjoy so much in the summer. And we just got to endure this pain. After the cold comes the thaw. And after uh, a few more losses than you'd like came a great win and yes. hopefully more to yeah. come because conference tournament is here and nothing yeah. beats the month of March in college right. basketball. And so, you know, we're, we're, we've experienced that a little bit on our team, too. We're going through this growing process, which is super painful. We, we are all wishing it was over. Um, 
but there's gonna be an incredible payoff at the end of it. And we're gonna all enjoy it together because you guys keep showing up and it's gonna be magical and I can't wait. And, and hopefully we're gonna get a little bit of that magic this week. We're gonna to talk to the guys when they come out, uh, Gideon and Rudy for their thoughts, but uh, what were your senior night reflections after you kind of let it settle in after Saturday night? Um, I, I had a lot of thoughts, um, um, but mostly it was about, uh, about Gideon and Rudy and, and the two extraordinary human beings they are and, and two guys that in a billion years never would have imagined ever finding themselves wearing that spectacular jersey that you're wearing right now, wearing a <laughs> BYU jersey. And um, I thought, uh, you know, I, I think I took a lot of time thinking about um, how much they have, what an incredible impact they've had on BYU, on our university, on our community, and we could list off for days, the, and on our locker room, the impact they've had, and also the beautiful impact that BYU's had on them, and that is part of the greatness of this university. And, um, and it's growing both ways. It's growing in these incredible people that are coming here and sharing with us, and it's also by the incredible impact that BYU has on, on these 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 young people. So it is awesome. I, I'm super proud of those guys, happy of them, uh, grateful for their resilience, was super grateful for their performance yeah. um, well, on that Saturday nice games, because yeah. then we got to all celebrate together, all 16,017 of us, and that was awesome. Mm -hmm. And there are 360-odd college basketball teams in, in Division One, and BYU finds itself in the top 5% yes. yeah. of, of fan bases in terms of fans who show out for games. Yeah. BYU is a, a number 14 national attendance team right now. Uh, at, all, at more than 14,000 fans per game. And as the uh, options get wider and it gets tougher for some team, for, for, you know, for some schools to draw the number of fans they used to, BYU fans continue to show out. And on weekends that have been snowy more often than not, they find a way to get there. And, yeah. and uh, again, just a, what, what, a, what, what a really like affirming stand out, yeah. uh, show out of fans on Saturday. It's awesome. It makes us yeah. feel like we're doing this all together, which is the way it should be. It was the end of an era, uh, the WCC era, at least at home, you'll, you'll go to play some WCC games in Vegas. Um, looking back on it, what has the league done for BYU? And, and how did these 12 years, you know, what will this 12 year period be looked at, do you think, in BYU basketball history? Well, I think, I think it's been a great league for us um, to kind of get us from the Mountain West to the Big 12, right? It's been a great league. It is a basketball first league. Um, it, you know, that's the primary sport on every single campus except for ours. And um, it's, a, it's a league with great coaches and great teams. It's a league that's grown so much since we entered it uh, to where now it's perennial two, three, uh, sometimes even four NCAA bids. And in, in the last several years, at least a couple teams in the top 25 in the country. Uh, it's been awesome for us. It's been humbling and it's helped us grow. And uh, we've had unbelievable partners in the, in the West Coast Conference. Uh, we've developed some really uh, tremendous rivalries with the with Gonzaga and St. Mary's that, that hopefully you'll see some future. And it's, it's been really special. And, uh, and, and it, it, it's, it's served its purpose. It's been really, really amazing. We're so grateful and then we can't wait to move on. Zags and St. Mary's and BYU were kind of always there. Is it fair to say as we leave the WCC that as time went on, more teams got more better players? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, we ended you know, for a large portion of the season, we had six teams in the top 100, which is, which is super competitive with any non-Power 5 conference. And so um, it's been really fun to watch this entire league grow. And, and, and for example, Gonzaga has changed so much. Um, when we joined the league, Gonzaga was kind of a Cinderella team, and they've become, you know, almost every year, and it's expected they're going to be the number one ranked team in the country to start the season for the last four or five years. And so um, everybody in the league has grown, and it's been, it's been really great to be a part of it. Tomorrow, the all-conference teams come out. Today, the all-academic teams come out, came out. Let's shout out two of your guys, Fuseni Traore. All academic first team and Trey Stewart, all academic honorable mention. Uh, Foos, a 3.68 yeah. in business, and Trey, a 3.44 in psychology. And Foos is a guy who a few years ago was trying to become acclimated to a new country. And yeah. here he is pulling a 3.68 at BYU. Yeah, do we have time to talk about these guys? Yes, let's do it. Okay, yeah. so everybody take a look at these two guys. These are two extraordinary human beings. Can we leave that graph out because it's so good? <laughs> I mean, it's so, so, first of all, they're beautiful, right? Right, well, uh, so, so Shauna Howell yeah. is, is the person who's primarily responsible for the BYU she's basketball incredible. graphics this yeah. year, and she's a genius. Yeah. She is not just a graphic designer, she is an artist yeah, in every sense of the she's word. She's amazing. And so everything you've seen from BYU basketball is when it comes to these nifty graphics that get put up like this, that, that's her kind of handiwork behind it all. So Trey Stewart, um, it, it, what he's done growing on the basketball court has been really extraordinary this year. And then obviously what he's doing academically is incredibly special, and then what he's doing 
doing in our community in terms of being a voice for mental health in youth is incredible. And then Fus Traore, you guys know that he didn't speak English really three years ago. Yeah. Like he really didn't speak English. And here he is crushing it at BYU. And I rolled in uh, to the, our player lounge in the annex. You guys are gonna get to tour the annex after this show if you want to. But in our player lounge um, at, at about 8, 8.05 this morning, uh, Foose was in there. And this is a true story. I walked in and Foose is in there with a tutor going over his accounting work. And then I literally just left the annex. And as we walked by the annex, Foose is in there with a tutor going over his religion classes. And mm. it is now 6.20 when I left. And you think about how hard this young man is working. Both these kids are working in everything they do. It is breathtaking. And they're growing into superstars, both sophomores. Uh, both have had incredible experience at a really, really young age as basketball players. And their future is so bright. And they're incredible examples. I mean, I couldn't think of better examples to represent BYU than these two kids. So let's hear it for the student athletes, yeah. Usemi Traore and Craig Stewart. Uh, let's take a look back at some of the moving pictures from the Marriott Center on Saturday night. To highlights and stats presented by Intermountain Healthcare. And we're going to showcase a few players in particular with one of the two seniors kicking us off. That's Rudy Williams. Rudy had a 21-point game for you against San Francisco on the weekend. 15 of 16 at the free throw line. He actually leads your team in free throw attempts this season as the point guard. Uh, had seven assists, double figure scoring in seven straight games now for Rudy. In his first start since early December, he was ready to go. Yeah, he was incredible. You know, the, the number we talked about after the show was he was seven assists, one turnover, and 16 free throws. And so what that means is that all of the San Francisco guards were taking shots at stealing the ball from him all night long. He went to the free throw line 16 times. So they were fouling like crazy, trying to grab like crazy. And he only had one turnover on the night with seven assists as a distributor. You, you look at, at his trajectory from when he first got here as a combo guard that had really never been a full-time point guard and, and had some, some complicated moments early in the season to what he accomplished in his last home game of senior night uh, and to what we expect from him uh, this week and next week. It's incredible how he's grown. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, usage is one thing. You have the ball in your hands yeah. a lot, but what's happen what happens at the end of your possession? Yeah. And Saturday night was a great yeah. example of good things happen pretty much yeah. every time you finished a possession. Yeah. It's Fantastic. Awesome. All right, let's get to uh, Gideon George, the other senior you had going for you on Saturday night. Gideon had a nice game, 12 points and six rebounds. He'd gone four games without a three, made up for that early. I uh, had a couple threes in this game. And uh, it, it's, in a way, it's kind of hard to believe that it's already over for Gideon because he's still growing as a player. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's really great, guys. You think about the conversation we have. So Gideon has not, uh, hasn't played as well as he who would like to the last several games. And so we spent all week talking about, and he was totally engaged. He's like, I'm just gonna guard, I'm gonna guard and I'm gonna rebound. That's the control of things. I'm gonna guard and I'm gonna rebound. And on the third and fourth possession, he hits back-to-back -back threes <laughs> of the game. But that's what but happens. There's a lesson in that. That's what yeah. happens when you focus on the controllable things. All the other stuff just comes and it he had a tremendous showing and he's had an incredible career here and, and what he's done for our community and his community in, in Mena, Nigeria in his time here as a Coug. And it was really special. I don't know if, if anybody was at the game or got to hear him speak. Uh, you know, he, he got to give us both guys give a little speech at the end mm -hmm. of the end of the game, which I hope we talk about when they come here because it's pretty funny. But you know, Gideon got to grab the mic and say um, how grateful he is to God that he had a chance to be here and do this. And, and um, he's just an extraordinary young man, and, and he's, he's been awesome for BYU. He said, thanks to Cougar Nation for having me here. Yeah, that's right. you know? yeah. And then uh, let's take a look at Foose as well. Uh, Foose had his 17th career double-double in this game, uh, 17 points and 14 rebounds. When uh, he has a double-double, good things tend to happen for BYU Cougs. are 12 and 5 when Foose goes for a double-double. And he had a career high, five assists to go along with his points and rebounds. Yeah, and he is, he is you know, he's surrounded every time he catches the ball right now. And he is winning those balls that in the first half of the season sometimes got away from him. He's so physical right now. And there it is. Yes. His first three of his career. Let's give it up for Foose. First three of the season. He had one last Did year. He had one last yes. year. Yes, yes. So I'll tell you what's really great about Foose. It tells you what a bad coach I is. And, I am, <laughs> and Greg and I talked about this. So I walked in halftime like, oh, what is wrong with Foose? He's not playing as well as he should. And he's got 11 points and six rebounds, shooting 70% from the field. At halftime. When you look at the stat sheet at halftime. Yeah. So, 
He spoiled us so much that if he ever misses one shot, you're like, what is wrong with him? <laughs> he's, he, he, he had a tremendous night also, and, and really the physicality that he's bringing to the game is super special right now. Our stat sheet here, and uh, BYU dominated inside, both in scoring, and that plus 20 in rebounds is, is a massive number. Yeah. Yep. Um, we protected the ball, you know, we were, we were, we were 10 turnovers and, and we, we were really dominant on the glass. That's a good recipe that we're going to have to continue uh, for sure on Friday night. And there was something on the line uh, for you going into this game. You had to win to be and where you ended up, which is a five seed in this Yeah, game. and it was nice because we rolled into the game knowing exactly what would happen if we won or lost. If we lost, we're a seven seed playing on Thursday yeah. night. If we win, we're a five seed playing on Friday night. And, and uh, so it's nice to go into those games knowing exactly what you're playing for and, and the guys performed. All right, uh, USF game was a great one for BYU. From the stands to the scoreboard to the stat sheet and to help us break down some of the many things that went right on Saturday night, we go inside the film room with assistant coach Cahill Fennell as he sits down with our Jerem Jordan inside the film room. All right, Cahill, what a performance from uh, the guys and, and the coaching staff uh, to pound San Francisco in that way. Team that had beaten you, it's senior night, four game losing streak, got to win to get to five. You guys absolutely showed up in one of the best performances of the year. What did it take to do that? Full credit to the guys. The guys really executed what they were asked to do, right? It was just an awesome performance from them, top to bottom. Uh, I think every guy on our team could put their hand up and say they performed at their best of their abilities and competed. Uh, San Francisco, they're obviously really, really talented with their guards, but they, they kind of outfought us the first time we played them, and that's obviously unacceptable, except especially to your point in closing the, closing the show in the season, um, closing the show on these, some of these guys' careers with Gideon and Rue. And uh, it's just really important that we came out with a strong performance. Rudy was especially strong, and he started off really nice distributing the ball, but also he was very patient. And on this clip, he gets into the lane, uh, gets his defender on his hip, and makes about an eight footer. Yeah, Rudy was terrific. It is a great example of him coming off a ball screen, uh, being really, really patient to use your words, and then putting the, the defender in jail. Uh, Khalil Shabazz, uh, number zero, is a fantastic on ball defender. He's really, really pesky. He's tough. Um, so for Rudy to be tough with the basketball, first and foremost, and then come off this thing with poise, uh, get the defender on his back, and make a really tough 10-footer um, over Zane Meeks, who's extended uh, contesting the shot. That's a big time play by Rudy. Okay, next one, uh, Rudy hands off to Gideon, who was really hot, hit two threes in a row. Yeah, this was big. I, a little bit of a mix-up. Gideon probably shouldn't have been in the spot in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Pus, out. It, it did work out. Fuz is actually coming down to set a ball screen for Rudy. Um, Rudy uses it again, shows great patience and poise, um, makes the right play, does what the game tells him to do, not what he's assuming Gideon's going to do. Uh, Gideon flies off this thing in the traffic, shoots it with confidence, and makes it. So you're telling me not every play you run is uh, the exact way you want it run? No, no. It's, it's <laughs> It's not an equation, unfortunately. It's, it's human beings, young people, and uh, they're gonna make mistakes, and sometimes they do it for the right reasons. Okay, Foos has finally called his number from three, and he makes uh, this. He made one of eight last year. He goes one for one in this situation. There's just so much space there, why not? And that was center cut, too. Yeah, with, with Foos, uh, you know, he's, he's in this trail position right now. He's probably thinking, I'm going to shoot this three. As, <laughs> <laughs> he's looking at Mark Abetsky back up. Uh, but credit to Foos, man, he shoots it with confidence. He's been shooting at a high level in practice. He makes a lot of threes in practice. And, uh, you know, he has the freedom to do that if the player's going to play him at the nail. So uh, I'm really excited for him. A lot of offensive highlights, but defensively, Jackson Robinson and, and everybody on the wings. <laughs> really good defensively. Tyrell Roberts was limited. Shabazz went for 21, but it wasn't like that 30 output we've seen, right? Right. And uh, Jackson kind of brings down the house here with the uh, steal and dunk. Yeah, I, I think Jackson, this was his most um, well-rounded performance of the season. I think he was fantastic defensively. Um, he was super efficient offensively, uh, took care of the basketball, uh, with some assists, no turnovers. I think he had three steals in the evening, uh, and that was one of the highlights, but he was fantastic all night. Oh, to be that long. Right. Just go like three dribbles and just <laughs> hang on the rim, right? Absolutely. He is Absolutely. awesome. Okay, and then this is the greatest inbound play in the history of BYU basketball. Um, yeah, Shabazz, we mentioned before, takes a lot of risks defensively. Uh, really hard playing dude, and he's, he's thinking more about uh, being disruptive here, and he's assuming the Dallas is going to come off some action going towards the strong side of the, uh, strong side of the floor. Um, just gets out of position, and down recognizes and makes the play. Never assume, right? Never assume. Just don't assume. <laughs> okay, important week, um, obviously, in the West Coast Conference. You're the five seed, you get Portland or San Diego. What's the preparation like in a unique week where you know it's one of two opponents and you got to wait a few days and you got to win and keep going? Absolutely, it's a massive week as you mentioned. We really, we really need to close this um, this season strong. I think the guys have developed to the point where we progress, where we can really compete for this championship, right? But to your point, we have to win on Friday first. It's how are we going to prepare to beat San Diego and uh, and Portland? A little weird in that those are the two that you only played once. 
So yes. you don't have the second game of film, and as a while but ago. you won, and it was a while yeah, ago, exactly. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of reminders that have to be put in place, some some subliminally, so they don't really know who we're talking about, but <laughs> uh, we have to kind of sprinkle in some actions for our opponents that, that either could run and, and get our guys ready to go. Okay, thanks for the time, appreciate, appreciate you, Kale. Thank you. All right, thanks to Coach Fennell and Jerem Jordan. As we break, this is your reminder that your day-to-day -day Cougar Sports play-by-play -play happens on BYU Sports Nation. Join Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan weekdays, noon Eastern, on BYU TV and BYU Radio. When we come back, Deep Blue Profiles, Coach Fennell, and we welcome back BYU seniors Gideon George and Rudy Williams for a post-show swan song as BYU basketball Mark Pope continues. BYU Basketball with Mark Pope is brought to you by Siegfried & Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Cascade Collision Repair, serious about perfection. And by Smith's, fresh for everyone. BYU basketball with Mark Pope. Time now for our final edition of Deep Blue as our season of coaches shows comes to a close. And our final story this year focuses on the newest member of the BYU men's basketball coaching staff. And in it, we discover that Cahill Fennell found his calling in life to coach because he wants to help people, which has always been something those close to him cherish. Here now, Deep Blue with coach Cahill Fennell. His career started out, you know, like many salespeople's career start out is is really hard, and you have to go grind to get to get the sales for sure. Purely entry level job, um, I was probably losing money. You know what I mean? I was paying for my gas, and I was living at home in Thousand Oaks, California, paying rent to my mom to live in my high school bedroom, and it was brutal. He sold copiers, and it sounds like a terrible job from, you know, somebody in college and th in his particular situation, you know. But yes, it, it was a hustle, a lot of cold calling. I was never really passionate about selling, you know, pharmaceuticals or, or medical devices or certainly not copiers, but it was something where, you know, I didn't, I didn't really have any other skills, right? I wasn't good enough to be a professional basketball player. Um, I couldn't, I wasn't smart enough to be a lawyer or a doctor or anything like that. So I feel like that was the only thing where I could make money and be, you know, have some form of success. So. As I kind of moved up the ladder of the industry, I, I started to make pretty good money and, and earn a good living for myself and my family. And, you know, although I wasn't passionate about it or fired up about it, uh, it, was, it was really hard to leave because I just didn't know what the alternative would be. He had a great sales career. I did feel like I, I just wanted to do something involved with basketball on the side, right? Just kind of scratch that itch. And decided to get into coaching. I, uh, I was selling medical devices and I was, I was the head coach of this JV high school program in, in Northern California. I think it really triggered a huge interest that he didn't know was there. He didn't realize it would, would turn into something bigger. It was unbelievable. It was just an unbelievable experience. I, I really loved it. I surprised myself um, how passionate I was about it, how much you know, it consumed my thoughts, how much I cared about the kids, and I cared about winning, and I was really fortunate to work with that group. A friend called me and said, hey, I got a buddy I played with, and uh, he's, he's looking to get into coaching. I said, okay, well, that's great. Uh, you know, we don't really have a position at UTPB. And I said, I don't know, I, like, if he wants to come out and volunteer his time and work for free, that'd be great. I'd love to talk to him. But, I, you know, I threw that out there thinking, oh, yeah, this is going nowhere. I learned that I was a really bad coach. I didn't know anything. You know, and I played at a low level, right? I wasn't a very good player, and I played at Division three school, so I, I didn't really know what good looked like. I had never been involved in a high-level program. He just goes, yeah, coach, I'm coming. We sold my house in Oakland, and that bankrolled us for three years. Friends thought we were crazy, which we were. I mean, if you think about it on paper, it was a, it was a pretty risky move. But, you know, he, he set his goal, and we're still pursuing it today. We're a team in this. <laughs> you know, she had a great career. She's super successful in sales herself. And, uh, you know, we had two young kids under the age of two. And, you know, for her to walk away from all that was, you know, special. And, couldn't have done anything without her. And now we go from being a very average Division II program to now we've got a really good team. Like, we're really talented now. And it really was all because of Cahill's efforts in the recruiting. 
He recruited kids to the school without them coming to the school for a visit because it would have deterred them from wanting to come. <laughs> That's talent right there, right? And then through that year, our studs went to battle for us and uh, we ended up winning the conference. After this, the year that they had in Odessa and at UTPB, Coach Peary had an opening for an assistant position, Division One in Portland. It's just exposing me to different levels and, and different styles and different coaching and all this kind of stuff. I mean, you just have to remember just like how low of a level I started at and how naive and bad I was at my job. And we kind of caught lightning in a bottle for a season and it was awesome. So the move from Portland State to Louisville, uh, director of operate, basketball operations, was a, was a, good, uh, a good opportunity for Cahill. Just to see how, how, how you can be truly effective in that way was, was awesome for me. Being a director of operations obviously, you know, wasn't why I got into the business, but you, you know, you learn from everything, right? I, I had to get better at admin stuff, I had to get better at organizational stuff, I had to get better at detail stuff, and it was a great experience. Brianna Taylor's death occurred in Louisville, and that was huge, so it was volatile in the city, and it was, it was a really tough period. I think people were truly upset. There was a series of protests in Louisville that was happening consecutively. I went, and I went by myself, and it was the coolest, most special thing I've ever been a part of. Not looking to do anything wrong by any means or get arrested that night, but just to be there as Cahill Fennell, not, you know, Cahill Fennell coach or whatever. He was there representing his family and, and... Everybody being out there together, sharing a common goal and a common voice was just a, just a really cool thing. You know, when the police showed up, it, it, like I said, it was well before curfew and, and things just really escalated and it was just truly unfortunate because it was, it was unnecessary. One of the things about Cahill is if anyone that he feels is wronged, he will stand up for them. There was a woman there that was significantly older than me. She was pushed and, and kind of shoved with the shield and, and I just thought that was completely unnecessary. You know, I, from there, I think some words were exchanged and, and that's where the problem started and the police just took him down and arrested him at that point. The charges ended up being dropped. We're grateful that they were dropped, but it still happened. For it to end that way was sad. It, it really was because it turned something beautiful into, into something ugly that, that didn't need to occur. He can relate to every single one of our players, no matter where they're from in the world, what their background is. He has a, a beautiful moral compass. Coach Cahill's perspective from outside of the state really helps us understand from a staff as well as for players how we can be more belonging right here at BYU and help grow everybody's perspective right, of what it means to be great right, in our lives. If you work really hard, if you treat people well, if you do your job well, if you try to help people along the way, I think you've checked a lot of boxes, right? So I think that goes for my family, that goes for my basketball family, and you know, hopefully there's some success tied along with that, and that's really all I could hope for, I guess. So how was it that he ended up with you? I mean, this basketball world is small in some incredible ways. And so, um, you know, I had a bunch of references, but a bunch of people contact me saying, hey, this is the guy, this is the guy, this guy. And then uh, we got to spend a lot of time together. It was a huge uh, decision for him and a, and a big decision for us. And I'm telling you, we, man, we're blessed to have him and his family here. Sarah is unbelievable. And, and uh, Ezra and Koa are, uh, is, <laughs> It's, they're <laughs> so fantastic. They're a tremendous family, and, and Cahill brings so much to BYU, make us all proud. And hopefully great things ahead for all of you uh, as, in the Big 12 as we move forward. Well, uh, Saturday night uh, was indeed a special night for anyone who was in the Marriott Center for the Cougars' big win over San Francisco. But the evening had the deeper significance for our two in-studio guests tonight because it was the last game either one would play in front of their home fans, fans like you all. Please welcome back into Studio C for one final time, seniors Gideon George and Ruby Williams.
What do you brand? What do you have there in your hands? Uh, some Starburst. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up candy for a little bit, so I'm back on a little. <laughs> you okay with it? There's like no rules against candy with you guys, right? Hey, whatever's got him playing as well as he's playing right now. Let's keep it coming. Welcome back in, guys. Uh, it's been a few nights since senior night. Um, you went through it uh, as a BYU Cougar, uh, and you'd been at other programs. Uh, maybe you didn't see yourself ending as a BYU Cougar, but you did end that way. What was it like Saturday night? Uh, it was special, honestly. Um, the entire time I was trying to not distract myself with the whole like senior night dramatics and stuff like that and my family being in town. I was just trying to get the win, but um, uh, when we uh, subbed out for the last time, coach told me to like soak it all in and embrace it one last time. And that's when it really hit me. And I was like, this place is special. And you know, I'm glad we got the win. And you got to come out at the same time, more or less, didn't you, Gideon? Yeah, just like, just seeing my family there. And I'm so grateful for God for putting me in that like opportunity and moment, you know? And just like, as I say, Coach Bob coming to New Mexico to recruit me, like he come out of um, the place of nowhere to come recruit me in New Mexico. So I'm just so grateful for all the help and love the fans have showed me throughout, throughout the years. They have the special moment in my heart. And there's a look at what uh, went down Saturday night as you came out uh, for the final. <laughs> like I did mention that on the air. A little bow from Gideon there. Very nice. And uh, the end of the game was pretty special. And, and you mentioned Coach Pope, how they both got to take the mic. And you said, now, did you guys both know you'd be speaking or not? He come and get, he asked that like, what? Two seconds left to go, and he was like hot mic, and I was like, "Well, coach, kind of have no choice, you know." So the so the so the fight song is finishing. You know, we always have the fight song. We'll gather around the the free throw line in front of the the rock, which thanks to the rock for showing out. They were mm -hmm. unbelievable, and so uh, uh, Bobby handed me a hot mic and. So I turned to Rudy and I was like, Rudy, do you want to say something? And I knew what the answer was going to be. It was like, yes, because Rudy would never turn out an opportunity to have a live mic. <laughs> yeah. So it continues, but he didn't have a lot of time to prepare. He gave a great little speech and tribute and said thanks. And then Gideon took over. And he just stole the show. And Gideon, Gideon has been here for a couple of years. He knows about the post-game senior night speech. And then as Gideon was talking, how did you feel, Rudy? Well, when I gave up the mic, I was like, okay, mine is short and sweet. And you know, I thought it was pretty efficient. And then Gideon comes in and he's like, I want to thank God. I want to thank everybody. And I was like, well, okay, my speech is terrible. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I should have said anything. So you could have asked for the mic back. Like, and, one, and one more thing. Uh, yeah. Gideon would have been, <laughs> been there all night. So Leanne tells me after the game, she's like, yeah, I was watching Rudy when Gideon started. And he thanked God and he thanked his family for being there. And Rudy standing to the side, his head just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's helpful to go second. Sometimes. Yeah. Now, Rudy, was it was that the first time uh, your mom and family had seen you play in Provo? Was uh, that yeah, seen? that was their first trip to Utah. Wow. Uh, my mom, she was in full tourist mode. Like she was soaking it up. A bunch of pictures on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. So they had a good time. Were they impressed then? Yes, definitely. And she was. She kept talking about the Marriott Center. And she was like, "Oh, this place is full of energy." And so they definitely enjoyed their stay. How much of a draw for players that are here and players who will come here in the future is that building on nights like Saturday night? Well, interestingly, um, Gideon can answer that because on his recruiting yeah. visit was our first year and he happened to come um, the night we played Gonzaga our first year and the <laughs> students stormed the court. Did that have any impact on your decision? Uh, that's pretty cool. I've never seen something like that in my life. So just like seeing everyone running down the court, I'm like, what's going on? So, uh, so that's really, that's really awesome though. And just the way the coaching staff are here, just the way they really care about, you know, just you being a basketball player, just care about you as a human being. I think that impacted my decision coming here. Who did you have with you on Saturday night uh, for, for the pregame ceremonies? Um, Brandon, awesome Brandon, my beautiful wife was there, my brother flew in from Pittsburgh and his wife and uh, his kids and my boy from New York, he flew in from New York, so that was like really good, I was so grateful they gave to come. And who all for you uh, came, Rudy? Um, my mom was there and then my two younger siblings, so my younger brother and my younger sister, and then my little niece, she recently just turned one, and then my sister-in-law. Okay. Uh, what, 
has coming to BYU meant for each of you? Rudy, we'll start with you. Uh, it's meant a lot, honestly. It's made me a better person, a better player, obviously, and just a more understanding person because from what I come from and growing up, like it's the complete opposite of what Provo is and what BYU is and all that. So when I first got here, it was, you know, it took some adjusting, but then I came to just understand, you know, just realize that people here, like, may seem different, but everyone's the same, you know? And I came to just accept everybody for who they are, and uh, I feel like it made me a more mature person and uh, uh, just, you know, getting older and wiser, smarter too, stuff like that. Awesome. How about you, Gideon? Um, I think I'm living the dream, <laughs> like just being back home, dreaming about like this time, just coming to the state, um, play basketball and get a good education. And um, uh, I cannot sell this for nothing. So I'm just so grateful for God for putting me in this opportunity and just the coaching staff trusting in me and um, got people like Brandon coming to Nigeria to come help me. So I'm so grateful and I'm really blessed for that. And each of your seats, sorry, Rudy. He taught me again. <laughs> you know, he, he, every time you say goodbye to seniors, uh, they'll, they'll be special to you. But these two in particular, what can you say about them? So, I mean, you know, we've been talking about Gideon George for three years. And he, from the first day he came here, he was spectacular and making a huge impact in our community and how we think about the world and how we think about everything. And, and um, you know, as a community, our understanding, you know, I mean, there's a lot of Cougar Nation that knows men in Nigeria now, and they didn't <laughs> know it before, right? And that's mm -hmm. actually super special. One of the great things that BYU does is it makes this world really small. It has the capacity to do that, and it has the capacity for us to each know each other and love each other. And um, Jesus brought a ton of joy, and, and uh, he's brought a boatload of wins and, and, and a professionalism about him and a, and, a, and a heart that is all about serving his community and this community and all the projects he's done. And so it's been really spectacular. And, and, and Rudy, uh, he just got an internal joy and charisma. <laughs> like, I'm trying to convince him just to go straight into television <laughs> and kill it, right? <laughs> This, the the post-game speech, you know, forgiven, right? I mean, he'd kill it. I'll do better. I'll do better. The, the one thing I know about Rudy is, is you guys, if anybody has a chance to go to Midnight Madness every year, it is a party. And it's the first time our guys get to walk into the Marriott Center and the rock just shows out like crazy. It's pandemonium. It's so awesome. And so some guys, you'll see some, some new players for the first time, they kind of get sheepish and they're kind of, you know, look up and all the attention thrust on them and they're a little nervous about it. Not Rudy. Rudy is like this. He's like, I am here! Let's go! And, and the really spectacular thing about Rudy, as, and, and, and the nice thing is, is we don't actually say bye to these guys, because they're going to be back and be a part of our BYU family forever. Like, you know, they're, they're just, this is just a, a change in, in our relationship, right? But they'll always be here. And, and the thing about Rudy is that, you know, he loves people so much. And so I, I, it's been incredible to watch him, how generous he has been with every single part of his life, whether it's on the court or off the court. Uh, he's just as likely to be um, hanging out with one of the student um, janitors that comes and cleans the annex every morning at six o'clock in the morning as he is to be hanging out with his boy who's now playing in the NBA like he loves all people and um, it just he just is he's just had such a huge impact here and we'll talk about both these guys forever we're glad you're both here in the building and glad you've both been here at BYU for sure we'll take a break when we come back we'll look ahead to the D the WCC tournament run for the Cougars and BYU basketball Mark Pro continues here we go. This week at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, it is BYU's 12th and final West Coast Conference Tournament. For the second consecutive season, BYU enters the event as a five seed. BYU won its tourney opener as the five seed last year with a win over eight seed LMU. This year, four seed LMU awaits if BYU wins its second round game again on Friday against either eight seed Portland or nine seed San Diego. Since Mark Pope became head coach, BYU has a perfect record against both Portland and San Diego, so I like that. And then a seven and one record against LMU. So 
One could say it's a historically favorable bracket draw for BYU. Number one seed St. Mary's awaits at the end of the draw. BYU played the Gales really well this year too as well. Coach, your thoughts on opening tournament play on Friday? Um, we can't wait. Uh, I think the guys uh, have, have real juice. I think they've worked so hard and, and grown in so many ways and we get to go get tested and see what we can do. And I think, I think of all, of us, all of us have a lot of belief right now. Let's talk briefly about these teams quickly. Uh, Portland and San Diego, you played them both only once this year. You had Portland here, San Diego there. Uh, you played both teams really well. Uh, USD was BYU's third road game at the conference campaign. They came into that game uh, scoring a ton of points. You held them to 48 that night. Yeah. These guys put together an unbelievable um, defensive performance, led by Gideon George, especially in transition G, yes. Yeah. G was spectacular in transition. Uh, and, and, and these guys really get out and run and really play well. And, and our guys came to compete, and it was a, it was a great job kind of answering the bell for them uh, like they've done all season. San Diego's had some injury issues late in the year. We'll see how they roll into Vegas. If it's not San Diego on Friday, it's going to be Portland. And oh, there's the San Diego break, uh, matchup breakdown. BYU did beat the Toreros by 20 uh, back on January 7th. If not the Toreros, it will be Portland. Uh, you played Portland just the one time. It was on New Year's Eve back in 2022. Uh, you won the game with a strong second. It was tied at halftime, right? Uh, strong second half. Now, they played that game shorthanded. No Moses Wood, no Tyler Roberts, and those are the two leading scorers. So with those guys back, you'd expect a different-looking uh, Portland team on Friday if you get them. Yeah, those are those are their two team leaders. Uh, you know, it's, it's Portland team is a terrific team. Uh, they've been together now for a couple years, and this Sholin was everything we could handle. Scored 32. On this given night. Um, but, uh, you know, either, either team we win is going to be coming off a win, and, and it's going to be really exciting, and, and we can't wait. Okay, there's a look at uh, the pilots. Uh, both teams are on the losing skids at the end. Portland's lost four in a row. San Diego's lost five in a row. But one of them will have just won a game when they take on BYU on Friday night. When we come back, social media Q&A for the coach and the BYU seniors. We'll have more BYU basketball with Mark Pope. After this, stay with us. BYU Basketball with Mark Pope is brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Cascade Collision Repair, serious about perfection. And by Smith's, fresh for everyone. season finale of BYU Basketball with Mark Pope. Time to get to our social media q and Can we do this, please? Uh, yeah. So we have... I don't even know what it is. During the yes, break, the we have studio audience uh, interaction, which is actually the best part of the show. Yeah. And so we just had a very, probably the most um, dramatic moment we've had on the show. And I don't want to call it contentious, but it was just on the edge. Because the question yeah. was uh, whether the guys like chocolate or maple cougar tails better. And one member of the student audience who will not be um, singled out <laughs> yelled out that cougar tails are actually overrated. <laughs> Let the controversy begin. <laughs> we also, and, and we also learned. <laughs> the crowd is and turning so, hostile. I, I get it. it got a bit ugly. <laughs> and we also learned that Rudy Williams has never had a cougar tail. Yeah. Can somebody yeah. please get Rudy a oh, cougar man. tail? <laughs> We got a couple days before you leave town. Yes. So, okay. Uh, to social media, we got Q&A. We got questions for Gideon and Rudy. Here we go. Gideon and Rudy, uh, if you were recruiting someone to come play basketball at BYU, what would be your number one reason why someone should come play for BYU? Uh, they, got, they got great people out here, and um, they really care about you, not as a basketball player, but with your well-being and... I'll say that we like be the trigger point if I'm in their position to pick to come play here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rudy, only a year here, but uh, what would you say? Uh, I'll echo a little bit what G said, you know, kind of just the support system that BYU has, not just the coaches, but just like the fans and just, you know, all the opportunities we get people to, to love on us. And then I would just say the opportunity because it's, it's high level basketball. That was one of the main reasons why I chose to come to BYU. So I would say that. Okay, uh, and Coach Pope, question for you from social media. Uh, what are the areas where you've seen the most growth in the players over the course of this season? Well, we talked about Rudy earlier. I mean, for him to be 7-1-16 is just, those numbers are crazy. It's just amazing. 
And Gideon George has turned into a, a consummate great leader. Like his, 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 he, he's going to, you know, probably spend the rest of his life, uh, you know, uh, having people pay him a lot of money to do leadership seminars because he's become a great leader. Okay, thank you, guys. Appreciate that. As we take another break, here's this week's trivia question presented by Cascade Collision Repair. Serious about perfection. Question is, who holds the BYU record for most points scored in a conference tournament game? The conference tournament coming up. That's our question. The answer is coming your way right after this. Stay with us. More BYU basketball. More folks. of our final show of the season. And it's basketball trivia brought to you by Cascade Collision Repair, serious about perfection. Question, who holds the BYU record for most points scored in a conference tournament game? And it is Jimmer Fredette. Yes, his BYU record 52 came in a conference <laughs> tournament. Yeah, came in the 2011 Mountain West Tournament against New Mexico. There it is. No one's ever scored more in a game than Jimmer, and it happened in a conference tournament. During the timeout break, Rudy guaranteed he was going to break that record. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Uh, let's look ahead to Friday night. It is BYU and either Portland or San Diego. You can catch an hour pregame show on BYU Radio with Mark Durant and me and Jason Shepard. Look for that. Cougar pregame live at 9 Eastern, 7 o'clock Mountain Time. And then the game itself can be heard on BYU Radio, seen on BYU TV, and then stick with BYU TV and BYU Radio afterward for post-game coverage from the West Coast Conference Tournament. All right, uh, we have a quick, quick, quick highlight of, uh, of something that happened over the weekend that made us wonder what happened. It is the return for one final time this year of what happened. And uh, a little background here. Uh, coach Eric Short is your strength and conditioning coach, and he tends to rally the guys in, in tight circles at different points uh, to get them ready to go. This was, I think, on Saturday night. That's just, this is typical Coach Short fashion, getting them all ready to roll. Now, we want to ask the question, are these guys okay? Are Richie and Trey all right? There's maybe a little contention there. No, they're beefing. Are they beefing? There's serious beef there. There's serious beef right there. Okay, I always wonder about that, because things get a little uh, energized <laughs> in the circle. But uh, cooler heads prevailed, evidently. Yeah. Okay. Those guys live together, too, so it's just <laughs> ironic. <laughs> oh, uh, beefing. <laughs> Coach uh, says that some of the best moments of the show happened during the breaks. Yeah. Right? And uh, let's go to the videotape and see what uh, popped up during our last break. Uh, I think Rudy was asked to do the gritty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's he's feigning reluctance it's here. <laughs> and, so, and so when Rudy does it, it's the Grudy. The Grudy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. right. so, so. I'm going to trademark that. Okay, yeah, there you go. Don't, for, don't forget about oh me. God, Whatever happens. Whatever happens. Whatever happens. <laughs> All right, let's have you guys both look ahead uh, to the weekend and what you hope is a longer stay in Las Vegas. It is conference tournament time. Uh, how pumped are you to get down to the Orleans and hopefully win a bunch of games? Uh, me, personally, I'm super excited. You know, I love going to Vegas, uh, playing games there. And I feel like we can really do something special. And like Coach said earlier, you know, there is a lot of belief and guys really feel like it's going to be a long stay in Vegas. Every team that you've played in the WCC this year, you, you could have played well. I mean, Gonzaga, you played two great games against them, two great games against St. Mary's. Does that give you a belief, too, that there's no one you can't play with down there? Uh, yeah, for sure, honestly, because uh, the one thing that's going to change this go around, no matter who we play, it, it's a neutral court. You know, we're not going to be up in Spokane, Washington, or we're not going to be in Moraga, California or Los Angeles, whatever the case may be, you know, we're gonna be in Las Vegas. So it's just neutral court and you gotta be better than that team that night, that day. Okay, Gideon, you've done the Las Vegas thing a few times. You are back for one yeah. final time. Uh, how excited are you to get down and play conference tournament basketball? Um, I'm really excited, you know, we got like an opportunity to go prove ourselves out there as a team. And um, we're just going to take it a day at a time and get better uh, tomorrow and uh, get better with taking care of our body. and. Um, we ain't going to just beat ourselves ahead of what's in front of us. We're just going to try and conquer the, uh, the day at a time. That's what we're going to do. And uh, I think we're in a good spirit and everybody knows. And so we understand what we're going to do to give us a chance to win. We have 30 seconds left on your final show of the season. Coach Pope, last words for Cougar Nation and for BYU fans as we head to Vegas. We've said this a lot, but just uh, full hearts, guys, gratitude for Cougar Nation. At Cougar Nation, there's, there's no fan base like you guys are incredible. And, and 
Right now we have a team that is is has been really tested and um, we've, we've had some successes and some setbacks and there's no fear on this team and there's a whole lot of hunger. And so we're going to go take a huge swing at this in Vegas. Let's see what happens, okay? Thank you guys so much. Super Coach, thank, thank you for the season. Thank you. 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 Th